Do you long for solitude or companionship? Hey, welcome back. Kevin here. Are you struggling with staying consistent on journaling or you're just like, damn, Kevin, I don't want to do it by myself. Well, I got you. That's why I created this series freestyle fire journal where you guys can journal with me each and every single day. I read a prompt from the one question in a day book. You can pick up your copy at refugeehustle.com slash journal. And I read out a prompt and uh, you guys can follow along by commenting below. But you know, like I said, if you want to pick up your copy, support, support my channel with that link, that'd be cool. You might be asking yourself, why do I call it freestyle fire journal? Well, it's because I want an intellectual hip hop vibe, but each and every single day I read this and I don't plan these topics. I just shoot straight from the dome. So I think it adds this like fun element to it where I just get to fully express myself too. If you don't want to pick up your copy of one question today, no worries. Just comment below. You can journal with me. You don't have to be like dear diary and type it and type out 10 pages usually just taking a line or two writing it down is good enough because you know what how often do we get to take a step back think about our lives think about how far we've come from and uh let's have some fun with this so comment below if you want to join me answer your questions i'll be hearting your comments i'll be liking them so guys uh support each other no negative uh no negative vibes here man and of course, every episode, I got to do a shameless plug. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe to this channel and make sure you say subscribe so you can stay up updated for every daily freestyle fire journal prompt as well. So you can join the movement. All right. Today's August 1st. And one of the questions that we have is, do you long for solitude or companionship? Now, what really sucks was that I just literally shot this whole episode and I didn't press record, which I fucked up. But I was saying like when I was a lot younger, I used to really be so dependent on people. Like I used to long for companionship because, you know, growing up, I didn't have too many friends. I was kind of like a loser back in back in the day. And it was really tough because I was a socially awkward kid. And my dad at the time would always yell at me, beat me, like typical Asian stare, parent stuff. And I just grew up with this feeling of never being good enough. So when I would talk to other kids and stuff, I would always have these self-confidence issues and whatnot as well. I was never really picked on, but you know, at the same time, no one wanted to be friends with that weird Asian kid in class too. And so whenever I did have friends, when I started getting older, like I really cherished them because I couldn't really go to my mom or my brother and really talk about the issues. But one of the th people I could always open up to were strangers. And I don't know what that, what about that is that is so comforti comforting for myself where I'm just able to open up with strangers and they're open up, they're able to open up with me. And it was really, really great. And it was pretty funny. My first set of friends were actually through like the nerds. I was lumped with the nerds. We used to do nerdy things like go to math club, science club. We also played like games like diplomacy with strategy and stuff like that. And those were my first group of friends. We used to even play Warcraft 3 at the end of the day, man. And it was really great. And I really valued these relationships a lot growing up because like, again, I didn't have that many relationships, especially when I was home. And so it was a way for me to kind of escape. And then it wasn't until high school where I started becoming a little more popular. Um, I, I actually started chilling with the Asian, Asian kids a lot more. We used to go to, uh, during that time, we also had social media. A few days ago, I was talking about like Zanga. And back in the day, like it was funny, the, I guess the, the non-Asian kids or the white kids at my school, they would use something called live journal. For us Asians, we use things like Asian Avenue. Like I don't imagine a white guy using something like Asian Ave, right? Uh, we also had Zanga. Um, and then later we had MySpace and Facebook was starting to become pop, like starting to gain traction, but it wasn't a real huge thing back in the day. But uh, those were our social media platforms. And during this time, I started talking to more people online because um, it was just fun. Like honestly, back in the day, especially when I could drive, like me and the other other kids, we would meet up random random Zangers or I don't know what you call them, Zangin Zanginians. I don't even freaking know. But basically, we used to meet up back in the day. And in the Boston area, there's only a few places you would go with the Asian kids, right? You go to Frog Pond during the winter time, and where Frog Pond is, it's downtown downtown Boston, where. 
people just go ice skating and stuff. So all the Asian kids would meet up there. There was also like Boston Bowl, and <laughs> basically all the Asian kids on like the weekend nights would just chill there and stuff. So they have bowling, that pool. All the cool kids would play pool half the time. So that's where I would uh, hang out. And I and um, there was also uh good times so good times was an arcade they had like uh they had a also pool pool in there and they even had go-karts and stuff but you know that's where all the cool kids would hang out and i would every single week i would meet all these like zanga people and stuff and people around the area and that's how we met up and i and to this day a lot of them are my friends and i don't know when during that time i would get such a thrill of meeting new and new and newer people every single week and as i was becoming more popular um you know during high school college was actually kind of different for me because i went to a college area where there weren't a lot of asian americans and i i i just really had this really great asian identity you know it's funny when i was growing up being asian or not it didn't really matter to me for the most part but maybe around seventh grade i realized that we're pretty different and when I talked to other Asian kids, it would just, we would just have this unspoken connection and it would just be, I was, it was just easier to communicate. And so when I went to this engineering school in college, I was like, damn, dude, this is like, this is hell. It's like, first of all, it's 80% guys. It was a freaking sausage fest. If you guys go to engineering school, you know exactly what I mean, a sausage fest. And there was no other Asians and stuff. So every single weekend, I'd be like, man, I'm so, or every single day I'd be like, I hate this place. I don't have any friends here. I don't connect with too many people. I just want to go out and meet people as well. And I would call people all the time. I had a lot of great friends like back home in Boston. So every single weekend in Boston, we go to house parties back when we we're underage. And like these parties were in kind of like in the Vimy's part of town cops would always come break up the parties and stuff and people would scatter it was like those type of parties you know what i mean and uh and that was that was a really interesting time in my life where it was it was like really exciting and i think that's one thing about me i've always been really really open to meeting a lot of people and it's i'm a i'm extreme extrovert where i get a lot of energy from other people and their vibes and all that sort of stuff so I was doing that. And then later when we weren't underage, we go clubbing every single weekend in Boston. I would do the same thing. And that was kind of like my early college days. And even pharmacy school, I still did the same thing. And even pharmacy school, I had even more friends and stuff. Uh, and I just felt so blessed with all the relationships that really came into my life because like my life back home was just so empty. I didn't really have anything here. I felt like you know my friends were so much more important because they were always there it was just like when i was whenever i was just going through a rough time they could be there but also during that time because i had such a strong dependency on people it was almost like a drug like i hated the thought of being alone and stuff like that too like you know i remember moving to california and i would always call people all the time and you know what uh, it was great connecting building up those relationships but also i knew i kind of had a problem when when I, when I couldn't sit alone by myself, you know, and I felt the need to connect, you know, and that, that's how you know you have a problem sometimes, right? And what's interesting too is like, I had this kind of problem with my initial relationships and keep in mind, I've been in a serious relationship for a while. I think I definitely do have commitment issues. I definitely am seeing a therapist later this week about it. But you know, back in the day when I was in relationships, I would give 110%, I would go balls out, you know, and when it didn't work out, I, I'd be so torn and it would be like, okay, let's try again. And again, I think around the third or fourth time, I just kind of, there's something about me that just kind of gave up. And it was just like, man, why am I investing my time into all these relationships when I need to be showing myself love? I need to be content with myself. And whether it's a platonic or a, a romantic relationship, one thing I learned is that you need two whole people to come together to have a really kick-ass relationship, whether friendship or romantic, uh, not just like looking for a half and another half because then you begin these weird dynamics of where people aren't independent and people are leeching. It's just a weird relationship and you can't build a kick-ass relationship off of that. And so um, in my romantic life, I kind of 
you know, was like, fuck relationships. I mean, yeah, I'm attracted to these women sometimes, but I need to work on myself. And I think this is like my MGTO like moment at that time where I want to focus on my own businesses because at the end of the day, I need to work on myself because guess what? The women, women in your life can always leave you. And this is the th mind that, and mindset I had. The women in your life can always leave you. But the one thing I'll always have is myself, my drive, anything that I built. And uh, that was like my relationships. But when it came to my platonic relationships, the real turning point for me was after my father passed. And I, I made that decision not to go back to pharmacy where, you know, I spent a lot of time by myself again. And it wasn't because I was depressed or anything like that, but it was because like I had to figure out a way to make it out of pharmacy. So I was very focused and I would be a lot more independent. I would be focused on my projects. I'd be focused on my business. I'd be focused on learning. And uh, at that time, like, and that was this turning point where I was like, dude, I'm okay being alone actually. It actually feels a really great getting things done by myself rather than um, always talking to people. And not to say I don't enjoy it because recently I went to the Asian Hustle Network event and it was amazing. It was so freaking fun, right? But, and that's when I feel at my best fulfilled. But in order to enjoy those moments, I have to get work done. I have to make a living. I have to really invest within myself. So I have these two dichotomies, which I think is important for anyone who you need to play both. You need to have aspects of companionship and being okay by yourself because otherwise you're always going to be dependent on one, one person or other. You can't, you can't hit your goals without talking to people, but yet you can't talk to people until you're in a position to talk to them when you're coming as a full person, if that makes sense. I know it's a little woo woo, but, um, it's so funny because, you know, fast forward to quarantine, I was actually so happy during quarantine because I didn't have to, I didn't have to like worry like about people and stuff. I could focus on my business and learning these different skills. So actually during quarantine, I was super happy. And now that we're out of quarantine, I'm also super happy, you know, Quarantine wasn't the best, like mental wise too, cause I couldn't work out and stuff like that. But in general, like, I think one of the things I've learned to build is being okay, being both. And when you can learn that you're okay with being alone versus ha being with other people, that's when you're at your happiness. So those are kind of my thoughts, my journey of developing this relationship with myself and developing relationships with other people. Even to this day, I'm so blessed to have all the relationships in my life because if it weren't for those relationships, I wouldn't be where I am today. So those are my thoughts. Now it's your turn. So I want to throw you the question. Do you long for solitude or companionship? How do you feel about it? Make sure to comment, uh, put your comments below and make sure to smash the like button and the bell to make sure that you stay subscribed to these daily episodes of the freestyle fire journal so that you can keep on journaling with me as well. That's pretty much it. And I will see you guys later. Peace people. Bye. Whoop.